What's up, shipmates? This is Nate Dog, but you can call me Nathan for short. I really didn't have any idea what was in store for me when I graduated from boot camp in 2020. But when I had Polar Star show up as the place I was going to go to, I knew I was going to go to some pretty interesting places. And I did. I went to the North Pole. And I made some pretty cool friends along the way. Such as McComas, the Dayton, Ohio kid. Sanchez, the really goofy Indian kid. <laughs> and Palazzo, the New York Italian. <laughs> And so it came to be in November of 2021 that it was time for us to cast off the lines and head off into Puget Sound, going south this time, to see some penguins and resupply the science base down in Antarctica. It was pretty exciting being out on the water again, and knowing that unlike last year when we headed north during the winter, it would continuously get warmer as we headed south. Being on the water was weird. People got seasick again. People had to re-earn their sea legs. But here's me, with my painted earmuffs. Every fireman on the boat gets them after they qualify. I'm a fireman in auxiliary division, which basically means that I work on small boats, fuel, different life support systems within the boat, and also work on boilers and HVAC. This is me in Palazzo moving along the pipes down in Turbine Room. The bilges are usually flooded with water and oily, slick stuff. Not really something you want to fall in. So you always have to be extra careful when you're moving along pipes. Here's Shannon, another member of my shop, working on one of the watertight hatches as we get closer down to the equator. That's us working on a fuel pump. A lot of the time it's just standing around watching the MKs or machinery technicians work on things. We're more like gophers. We go around, get wrenches when they need them, and just help out. But sometimes they trust us to go do things. So we'll go work on different fan spaces around the boat, making sure bearings are lubed up, things are tightened, and just keeping a very resilient watch on things. Other times, we'll just be sitting in DCC, or Damage Control Central, the home of A-Gang, or Auxiliary Gang as we're called. Messing around, talking about different things, and rolling in rolly chairs to the waves. As we got closer to Hawaii, which would be our first port call, and our first resupply, we ended up being able to go outside onto the deck and chill in the sun. Command liked to call it Steel Beach, because it was the only beach we had. We would watch movies in the hangar, do karaoke as well which was a lot harder than we thought it would be. But we became pretty professional at it. We also had a sauna on the boat, which was Captain's favorite thing. And I had to share the sauna with Captain quite often, which was pretty interesting. But it was definitely my favorite thing on the boat too. We ended up playing a lot of video games underway with each other. Like, for example, I finished Doom 3, Fallout 3, and um, Demon Souls as well. People started playing instruments too, and forming bands. My two good friends, Palazzo and McComas, actually finished an album. That's beautiful. Thank we you. We get Polar Don't do Starbucks. Oh, that's perfect. The official Starbucks alternative. We had a movie festival as well, which was really fun. This is my movie that I made. Um, it's a pretty long movie. It's about 15 minutes, so I didn't include the whole thing in here, but I think it was worth the Grammy. Look at that Oscar performance. Soon we were getting close to Hawaii and you can see the buildings in the distance there, which is very exciting. We started pulling into Pearl Harbor, which wasn't really as um, military-esque as I was expecting it. It looked more like a large construction area, but there were some destroyers there. And plenty of rainbows as well. There were a buttload of rainbows in Hawaii. Now, part of being an A-Gang requires fueling, so when we pull into a port call, typically we're the last people to leave because we have to fuel. So this is us sounding a tank, as it's called. That leads down to the fuel. We put paste on the tape, make sure we know what level it's at. 
This is us disembarking from the boat, heading into the wildness of Hawaii. Me jumping off a cliff, which was very sketchy actually. My feet hit the bottom. We didn't really swim and check it out. It was all murky. But Hawaii is really beautiful. I'd love to be stationed out here. The water is crystal blue and great swimming. But there were a lot of, what do you call those little spiky things? Um, what are those? What? Sea urchins. Sea urchins. Yeah, there's a lot of those little, little bastards around it's prickling your feet. Terrible. But yeah, I mean, it was pretty fun. We found some pretty cool places, some cool spots. My buddy Sanchez decided, oh, I'm gonna jump into the water here, do the ultimate cliff dive. So he headed over there to go do it. But then we told him it was a bad idea because apparently the last person who had done it had broke their leg. So next we headed to Waikiki Beach, the most famous beach on Hawaii. And the most, wa most full of babes as well. Afterwards we got a hotel and disembarked to downtown to meet up with some people that we had actually met who were from a, a different Coast Guard unit <laughs> that's stationed there. That right there is uh, culinary specialist Salazny, who was very sauced up that night <laughs> and very entertaining. Saw some firework displays as well. There's Knox, a seaman, and we headed down going further south until we hit the equator and they allowed us to do a swim call. There's some people on the uh, small boat doing shark watch, making sure there's no sharks that come near us while we're swimming. And they allowed the crew to just plop off into the middle of the ocean, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Palazzo ended up losing his GoPro during this, unfortunately. And that was way higher than it looks. With the boat swaying, it was a bit sketchy, actually. McComas got really scared jumping off that. <laughs> New Zealand. Eventually, we kept heading south, and now we hit New Zealand. Wellington on the North Island, which is a really dope city. I really liked it. New Zealand's a really cool place. And, coincidentally, everything is cheaper there. There's me riding the bull. But uh, the dollar is like a... It's like 75 cents of a, of a U.S. dollar. So everything's cheaper there. So Airbnbs and hotels were much cheaper in these foreign countries, which was always nice. Here we headed up to a observatory above the city. We got to see some of the wild plant life of New Zealand. Found a stray cat along the way who ended up following our group for most of the day. I lost a bet and had to roll down this hill, which is actually pretty fun. But with my fresh tattoo, it kind of hurt. <laughs> That's a whale heart, which was pretty cool. Got to crawl inside it, didn't realize they were that big. And we also saw these huge molds. Like that's a huge person um, of World War I stuff. Had to do some more karaoke and do the nightlife stuff. Sanchez singing. There's Bauer, the official party god. Wellington for me was quite a lot of drinking um, and partying and things like that. It was actually when we headed to Littleton on the South Island that um, it was less of that and more of uh, going out and doing different things. So. Went surfing, didn't really take any videos of that. But um, got a lot of really nice hikes in. The South Island is different from the North Island in that it's a lot drier than the North Island. Um, and the, the weather was a lot clearer during our time there. Lilton is also um, a big part of an Antarctic legacy in that uh, Captain Scott and also uh, Shackleton as well would come here to resupply before heading down to Antarctica. It was like the official last um, port call before heading south. So it was cool to continue that legacy as it was.
Got to go on a gondola here and head south down into the valley towards Christchurch, which is uh, the nearby city. Went to one of the beaches. What do you think that means? Is that from I the think it, this is some tribal art. What does this ancient language mean? Can you read it? I think, I think, I think. Get your impossible whopper from Burger King for a limited time only. <laughs> Well, we know what we need to do now. We must find the exit to this cave. And find the impossible waffle. Let us go. <laughs> and this was pretty bizarre. We uh, found a, just a big old mound of rocks down the middle of the beach. It was pretty high, so we decided to climb up it. That was pretty cool. See the comments in the distance there, just filming. We decided to like film a little music video on the beach too. Oh, and this was the uh, Airbnb and our first encounter with the gnarly insects of New Zealand, but he didn't survive. <laughs> Next day, I actually decided to uh, go out with a different group of people. I went out with uh, like some of the deckhands on board the boat, who I don't really hang out with as often. But um, yeah, we decided, to, they had rented a car, and so we decided to go far away from the city into the, the wilderness, as it was, and I had heard about this place called, um, what was it? It's a bunch of boulders in the middle of nowhere, but it's really cool. Let's see a buttload of sheep as well. They are all over the place in New Zealand. But yeah, it's just this natural formation of, of rocks. It's not a boulder, it's a rock. It's a, a lot of them though. And they're all over the place. We just decided to spend a couple hours climbing all over them, <laughs> um, which is a lot of fun actually. Sliding down grass hills and things like that. Damn it, now I have to do it. <laughs> but it's really picturesque. Really beautiful place. Reminds me kind of like a... Like, remember the Windows screensaver? Reminds me of that. With those grass hills. Next we decided, oh, let's go down to this cave that we heard about nearby. Uh, which was totally unmonitored. It was kind of... It was actually really bizarre, actually. Like, it was... This would not exist in the U.S. You would have tour guides and stuff, but it was like a 600 meter um, cave. I'm not even joking. Like there were several waterfalls we had to climb up, and you know it was all pitch black, rushing water through, really cold water. I saw a couple cave fish, which was really cool. Uh, cave itself took like somewhere from 45 minutes to an hour of steady. Um, yeah, walking to get through. So it was a pretty deep cave. Really, really cool. Probably my favorite experience of uh, New Zealand as a port call. We, we exited after and got to uh, drive to a nearby waterfall and check out, I think this is Arthur's Pass, which is like a big uh, film location spot for Lord of the Rings, which is pretty cool. And you can just see these, these massive valleys and mountains here. It's really, really cool. Oh my gosh. This is so actually right here, the way down. We have <laughs> very, very big lady bug. Now, I'm not too sure if you're seeing this, but this guy has traveled a very long way, all the way from so North America. The ocean. So our first tabular icebergs. Um, so those are, I mean, that's just the top of it. 80% of that iceberg is hidden beneath the water, which is really crazy. They were really cool. You could see pieces of ice falling off them into the water and Here's us eating, us <laughs> me and Shannon eating an iceberg. Uh, had a New Year's party. But um, the, the tabular icebergs break off from the ice wall, which is why they're all like sharp like that. They're really cool, you know, global warming and things. New Year's party was really fun. Uh, no alcohol, obviously, but you know, karaoke and all that sort of stuff. You know, this is the start of basically the longest day because the sun will be up from this point forward for about two months and that's the approaching ice pack that we're moving towards.
little bit of Sanchez and Palazzo in our birthing. <laughs> and you can see here how how smooth the water is. Like that is, it's not frozen yet. That's just how calm it is because once you get past the ice pack, like there's no waves, there's nothing to disturb the water, so it's just flat, it's just perfectly flat for miles and miles and miles. That's cool. You can kind of see an ice wall in the distance. That's the uh, Manhattan iceberg, or I mean, uh, glacier in the distance, and that's as big as Manhattan. Really cool. So our first packs of penguins fleeing from the might of the Coast Guard Carpover Star. Saw some killer whales as well, which were really really cool. absolutely huge they started following us because we um all our leftover food we would dump it overboard and so they started eating all of it <laughs> me telling off a seal freaking seals mate let's see here He's just checking for killer whales and leopard seals and things that could eat him. Oh. <laughs> Plops in there. Got a day out on the ice, which is really great. This was after our line crossing ceremony, which actually I, I haven't really talked about the line crossing ceremonies yet. Um, so it's, I won't go too big into it, but it's a big part of like naval tradition that whenever you pass certain latitudes and longitudes, for example, when we crossed into the equator, we had a big ceremony. Um, when we crossed the, uh, I forget what it's called, it's like the, the date line, it's basically what separates the furthest west you can go before it becomes east. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and we, that's called getting, like, it's the realm of the golden dragon, the equator is the, you know, the shellback, you know, entering King Neptune's court and all that, and so they'll have a bunch of things like the royal barber, and, um, you're called a polywog, and... They make you do all sorts of silly things, like wear your uniforms inside out, do tasks and group projects, little skits, things like that. It's me making a, uh, oh, actually, no, that's Sanchez. That's Sanchez making a snowman. <laughs> a little goofball. Uh, but yeah, the line crossing ceremonies are, are a big thing. We, we did one for crossing into Antarctica as well. It's me with my, my snowman, Fred. She looked good, don't she? Yeah, fuck you. You hear me? Oh. It's Paya, my petty officer, Shannon again. And you see here some penguins. We saw some penguins fleeing from a killer whale. We're like, oh shoot, okay. And you see they just jump out of the water like that. It's really cool. It looks almost effortless. Boop. <laughs> and there he is. Ooh, look at that fin. And there's a minky whale. That was really the only sort of whale I saw while down there. I saw a couple right, of them though. It's me drinking some ship coffee, which was me, yeah. absolutely terrible. Me, it's always burnt and toasted. But we did have polar Starbucks, which was actually pretty decent. So it's breaking some ice. So our boat can break up to 18 feet with like backing up and ramming. But for the most part, the, the ice that we were breaking was, was multi-year ice, but it was uh, like six to, six to 10 feet. You can see how the ice there was actually like blue. So that's because over time, it's stronger ice um, and it will become blue because all the salt will leave it. And so it's more, it's more pure ice, I suppose. You can see here, uh, you can see a little penguin. He, he was just standing in front of our boat as we just approached, and then eventually he was like, oh shoot, I guess I should get going. All his friends are running away. And he's like, oh, I, I guess I'll just keep running in front of the boat, <laughs> and just keeps going. Poor guy. We, we killed so many penguins and seals. It's actually unbelievable. We're just going down there and doing nature's job. But yeah, they would, they would just stand there, and sometimes they would walk in front of our boat. Like, they would actually come towards us as we came towards them. Really bizarre. But you can see here, he kind of... <laughs> he forgets that we're chasing him, and he, like, turns around, he's like, Oh, where am I going? <laughs> he's like, oh, shit. I guess I should keep going. <laughs> Jump the gap. Boom. 
and this penguin did not make it out, so cut that out there, but let's see, I had an, an emperor penguin, which was the, so that was an Adeli penguin before, but that's an emperor, and those are the two types of penguins we, we saw the most of uh, while down there in Antarctica, and the way I'd say it is like, there's Mount Erebus in the distance, the southernmost active volcano in Antarctica, but the way I would say it is, Adelis are really cute and adorable, and they just waddle around, and, and emperors are like these sulky teenagers that kind of skulk. And here you have the uh, the seals. <laughs> they look like slugs, the way they just move across the ice, just... <laughs> they're really funny. They'll huff at you. They're, they're kind of like assholes, but they're very, very funny to watch. Actually, here's... Uh, Macomas pretending to be a penguin. <laughs> it was actually, uh, this ice day was, was super, super slippery ice. So we were slipping around on that lot. Here's Sanchez pretending to be a seal. Here's Micah, um, one of the storekeepers on the boat, playing around on the ice. Me and Sanchez throwing ice at each other. Uh, like I said before, like me and uh, Micah and a couple other people, uh, we played a lot of video games underway. And like the biggest thing was like Minecraft, which we played a lot of. Um, and also, oh yeah, somebody busted their face open on the ice. Poor Sepe, my roommate back in Seattle. There's me sliding. But yeah, we, we play like Battlefront 2. We played a lot of <laughs> Galactic Conquest, which was a lot of fun. Saw two baby penguins, decided to eat them. There's an emperor brooding, being all sad boy. And then he just walks away. Always by themselves too, I didn't really see emperors in groups. They're always by themselves. Oh, here's an Adeli. He stopped. He was looking at our boat. You can see his head moving around. So confused by it. He's making some really funny sounds here, too. Had a rave, but I had to work during it, unfortunately. But you can see in there, it was apparently a good time. Uh, those are the ears that um, one of my shipmates, Serena, made for me during patrol. And then it was mess cooking time. Um, and mess cooking was basically where you go and you leave your typical job duties and you just go help out the cooks on the boat. So that's us in the scullery or the, you know, the area where you clean all the dishes, just goofing off, messing around. But it's typically not very fun. A lot of people will agree that mess cooking's the worst and all whatnot, serving people in line and doing things. But, um, you know, it's just basic cleaning and I think it's just the cooks that make it kind of bad sometimes. Not all of them are bad. In fact, a lot of my friends on the boat are cooks, but <laughs> She's going um, for it. Oh, I didn't some think of the cooks suck. Oh, Here's us new... finding I new and creative textbook. ways to enjoy our off time. So that's me and the other mess cooks playing some Jenga. And eventually it was time. We'd been down in the ice for about a month and we'd cleaned up. We'd made a big ice wedge, cleared out all the ice. Um, and it was time to stop by in the station and check out Check out McMurdo. And that's the big thing that a lot of people forget that uh, Antarctica is actually a landmass. So there is also, you know, dirt and, you know, rocks down there. Daytime still. Some of these clips will be at like two in the morning <laughs> and it's still daytime. They allowed a third of the crew to actually go on snowmobiles. It was like just randomly selected. And I was one of the lucky ones that was allowed to go snowmobile out onto the Antarctic Plateau, which was really awesome, but also incredibly cold. God, it was terrible. <laughs> My hands and feet were so numb by the end. Uh, it was about an hour out that we found this uh, old Navy plane that had crashed in the 50s and been buried by the snow, perfectly preserved. Uh, later on that same day, we got back, and I decided to hike up a uh, small hillside near the base, which is actually 
a famous hillside from past expeditions. They called it Observation Hill. They'd go up there and check and see if the sledding teams had returned from the South Pole yet. But you get a really good view up there of basically the entire ice um, ice plateau there, uh, and that continues for hundreds of miles. It's really deceiving, uh, but it's it, that's hundreds of miles. And there's the research station down there. And there's usually about, I think it's 4,000 people during the summer that are down there doing science, and then during the winter it's like a thousand. Um, but they had like a huge mess hall and huge lodges and uh, bars and cafes and things. So there was definitely stuff to do. There's a helicopter. They usually use the helicopters to ferry things between bases, people, supplies. This is Scott's old hut. So back in 1908, I believe, this was the hut that they used for the South Pole expeditions. And this is actually a hundred year old seal carcass because there just isn't you know, anything down there to decompose things. So being left out in the extreme cold, it it's just kind of, you know, frozen. Found some Medellis around the corner. So adorable. <laughs> I'd love to have a penguin as a pet. They're so, they're so funny. I decided to follow them down to the beach to see what they were up to. You can see a, a small little iceberg on the beach there that had washed up. I guess I should uh, talk a little bit about the ice. I mean, I guess I've talked about it. Um, I've talked about tabular icebergs and, you know, pack ice, which is just ice that's like collectively congealed into strong ice. We call it fast ice, actually, because it's fast to the land. Oh, I scared them here in the... He doesn't know what to do, so he's <laughs> deciding to run up this hill, which is really adorable. Uh, but there's also things like growlers, um, which is the type of ice that is just like these small little, like like the one on the beach, actually, that's a growler. Um, there's a lot of different terms we have for ice when we go down there. Oh, I saw this guy poking his head out of the water when I was crossing the bridge. And uh, the base actually set up a 5K for the, you know, for the crew. And so a bunch of the base scientists and us ran in a 5K, which was infinitely cold. Oh, here's another example of ice. This is called pancake ice. So as soon as we've cleared up all the ice, that's what kind of starts forming again. It starts forming these tiny little dinner plate shaped ice. And it's really flat. Here you can see how the the waves are riding. This isn't, uh, this ice isn't, fully frozen yet, so it's all kind of running with the waves. Those were the last penguins we saw before we uh, started getting back up, and that was the first night time that we had had in two months of continuous sunlight, so that was very exciting. This is us on the way back up, just came outside. A lot of people on the boat smoke, obviously, um, I think it's just a military thing. But it's, it's funny how it's divided. Engineers typically dip and decades smoke. Here's Sanchez and Palazzo. Here's us getting to Tasmania. So, very exciting. Almost if you have to pee, now's the time. Not on the bird. <laughs> I sure do love the scenery of Tasmania. And this is us walking in the wilderness outside the city of Hobart in Tasmania, which is a small island underneath Australia. And actually, Australians apparently think of Tasmanians as kind of like the boonies, the, the rednecks of Australia. And here's us. Uh, we were walking into a grocery store, and we found a newspaper that had Captain and Polar Star on it. So obviously, we're famous now. That's pretty pretty exciting. Uh, we found that very very funny. Page five. 
you know, catching beers in places. Hobart was a, oh my God, it's like a quiet, a quiet town. Look at those it was definitely the most chill place of all the port calls. And I will say a lot of people really enjoyed it, especially after the, you know, the 60 something day uh, time that we had spent away from, you know, anywhere except ice and Antarctica. And Tasmania is really beautiful as well. It's a very beautiful place. I'd definitely rank it as like my favorite besides maybe Littleton. I really liked Littleton as well. Saw these really odd rocks and lowland shrubs. It's me with Shannon. Decided to take a hike out and see what Tasmania had going for it. So got to play around with the boulders and eat digestives. Mmm, <laughs> tasty. And yeah, and then eventually we found these uh these funky looking broccoli trees. And it's it's interesting how it was really dry on top and like the more we descended down the mountain the more, you know, wet and moist and almost humid it became, which is really interesting. Next went to a zoo, uh, or a uh animal sanctuary. Got to see a Tasmanian devil, which is actually a scavenger, which is why they run all funny. I don't think that they could ever hunt anything. Got to make some friends with some kangaroos. This guy is very funny looking. Look at that face. <laughs> Look at that. They're funny. They're very funny. There's like several of them. They're just staring at me. <laughs> but they're all just laying down, chilling. And they're uh, got to pet them a little bit too. And they're, it's very surpri they're surprisingly very soft to pet. This is a wombat which is probably my new favorite animal. They have bony butts for defending their holes. They'll like hide in their hole, and if a predator comes in, they'll just thrust their butt up and smash it into their face. And um, they also poop cubes. That's correct, cubes. And they'll, they'll stack the cubes of poop. Oh, went to the uh, second oldest brewery in Australia, which is really cool. Uh, Cascade Beer is awesome. And this is me and a couple of my petty officers walking back to our Airbnb. And of course we get to see round two of the spider invasion. Uh, these guys were significantly bigger and faster. But we managed to take them down before they harmed any of us. Yes, being a Coast Guardsman doesn't end on the boat. We are heroes everywhere. <laughs> and that was uh, downtown Hobart. You can see kind of like the harbor and everything. And that's us walking back to the boat and going on the long way back. And it was around this point in time that COVID broke out on the boat, which is really annoying. Here's some flying fish. They fly away from the boat as we were going. Um, around this time was when patrol became kind of hard for a lot of people. It wasn't really fun anymore. A lot of people just wanted to get back. But, um, obviously, like, there's a lot of cool things about being in the ocean, you know? And underway life is always... It's a really nice lifestyle. Well, it's, you know, bad things and good things. These are our, you know, our three shafts. I guess I just wanted to, like, show off a little bit of what the engine rooms look like. So those are the three shafts that like spin our, our big propellers. And then we have like our diesel engines on board. And they're these big old engines that break all the time. But we always manage to fix everything on Polo Star, which is really miraculous, considering how it's you know 45 years old or so at this point in time. You know, if this thing was in the Navy, it would have been decommed already. But yeah, those are the engine rooms. We uh, canceled Tahiti because of COVID and instead ended up in San Diego, uh, went to the Sioux. I really only had like a day and a night there, so I you know, tried to fit all in. <laughs> the flamingos are quite funny. Very weird animals. I didn't really think flamingos were like that. Pull up, pull up, Jerry, pull up. That was also probably the coolest zoo I've ever been to. It was really like the topography of like how like you went through the zoo was it really matched the landscape really well. It was really cool. 
um, one of uh, one of our friends actually knew somebody in the Navy, and they took us around to, to see everything. So here we have, like, the poop beach, and see all, all the birds, and then the seals as well, the baby seal here with his mother. Oh, he snoozed. This guy's <laughs> scratching his butt. I would have to say uh, seals are probably the most... Uh, amusing animals to watch. They really, they have a lot of personality. They act like dogs, almost. They're like, I mean, I've heard that before. They're the dogs of the sea. This guy is still here, See this bro. guy? <laughs> We'd still have no idea what he was doing. I think he was trying to take a nap. Or he was, you know, unlocking his inner chi. These seals have zero respect for each other. <laughs> So funny. And uh, here's the, the Golden Gate Bridge. After our little pit stop in San Diego and stuff, Tahiti, we ended up going here. The finish line as it is, you know, sailing under the Golden Gate. And yeah, that was, that's it. That's, that's patrol kind of coming to an end. Everybody kind of, I, I definitely counted that as like, oh, we're done now. But we did have like a little week where we like waited by in the bay. And then eventually we came to Mare Island Dry Dock, the best part of being on Polar Star. Anyway, shipmates, don't forget, breaking ice ain't nice. Nate Dog out. Oh,